Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, another video uh, in our series of videos dealing with functions, uh, is going to concentrate on composition of functions. And it's another example of composition of functions. This time where we extend the composition to more than two applications of a function, if that makes sense. And let me just maybe just give you two functions that we're actually going to deal with here for this particular example. So let's say consider, consider the functions let's consider the functions okay uh, the first function is f and this particular function takes integers okay so it takes integers and it maps the integers into the into the rational numbers and it's defined by f of x uh, is equal to well let's say it's defined by it's equal to x plus 1 over 3 okay so what it does is it takes an integer value Okay, and it maps it into the rationals. Okay, it maps it maps it into the fractions. Okay, so it takes integer values and all integer values it takes and maps them into the rationals. Okay, and you can see actually what it does is it takes the value, the input, the integer, it adds one onto it that gives me an integer, and it divides by three. Okay, which is possibly going to be, for example, uh, if the integer passed in is three, I'd have three plus one gives me four, and I have that gives me four over three which is not an integer, it's actually a rational number. So this function takes integers and maps them into rational numbers. So let's consider that function f, and let's consider the function g, okay? So the function g, the function g takes rational numbers and it maps them into rational numbers, okay? And it's defined by g of x, g of x uh, is equal to, okay, well it's defined by g of x is equal to, let's say, x squared plus, plus 3, if that makes sense. And what we'd like to construct is we'd like to construct, okay, construct the composite function, the composite function, okay, the composite function, uh, well, the composite function I'd like to construct uh, is the function uh, g after f, after, after, g after f, let's say, after dun, 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 dun let me just say let me just actually get rid of that i don't want to do that okay i'll end up breaking the function i want to do g after f and i want to do g after i do g after f if that makes sense and i'm going to do it in this particular order here so i'd like to i'd like to construct this particular composite function here g after g after i do g after i do f if that makes sense okay so from a notation perspective, okay, so we want to construct g after g after f, okay, well that function, okay, that function that we're going to construct is, I suppose it's the function, it's the function g after g after f, okay, uh, of x, which is going to be the function, well what we need to do is we need to evaluate f of x first, so we evaluate f of x first, Okay. Then from the output of f of x, we pass that into the input of g, and so we evaluate g of f of x. And then the output of this particular function here, okay, we pass into g again, so we need to calculate g of, of that. Okay. So let's do this. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, so let's do the inner workings first. Okay. So we know that f of x is equal to x plus 1 over 3. Okay. So this function here, okay, so therefore we have g. Let's do g after we do f of x, okay? So g of f of x, okay, is going to be equal to g of, well, f of x is x plus 1 over 3. So it's x plus 1 over 3, okay? So that's what we need to do. So with this particular input, okay, with this particular input here, we need to evaluate g on that particular input. Now what g tells us to do is to square the input, here's the input here, and to add 3 on it. So this becomes x plus 1 over 3 squared, okay, plus 3. Now when we do this here, okay, this is the same as, well, it's the same as x plus 1 over 3 times x plus 1 over 3 plus 3. When we multiply fractions, we multiply top by top and bottom by bottom, okay? So what we're going to end up with here is this, is this becomes x plus 1 times x plus 1 over 3 times 3 is 9 plus 3. Okay, so I'm I'm really I'm really uh, doing all the all the intermediate steps here. Okay, this becomes well x times x gives me x squared. X times one is one x. Once times x is one x. So I have two x. Okay, 
And then what I also have is once times one gives me one, okay, all over nine, okay, plus three, okay. So what this, when we get common denominator here, what this evaluates to is x squared plus two x plus one, okay, all over nine, okay. And this is, don't forget, over 1. 1 into 9 goes 9 times. 3 nines is 27. So that's plus 27. So our function here, g after f of x, is x squared plus 2x plus 20, 28, all divided by 9. Okay? So we've now evaluated, okay, what g after f of x is. Let me maybe write that down a little bit clearer here. Okay? So what we've actually evaluated is, we've evaluated now is that g g after f of x, okay, g after f of x, okay, uh, is equal to the function x squared plus 2x plus 20, 20, whoops, 28, okay, divided by 9, okay. Now, what we need to do now is we need to calculate the function g after g of f of x. So, what we need to now evaluate is we're going to evaluate, evaluate, okay,